What do I do with all these scales? Dorian edition. Um, if you know anything about modes, uh, you know that the Dorian scale is the second mode of the major scale, which means like uh, if you're in the key of G major, you have a G major scale. All you would do is start on the second note, the A note, and that would become your tonal center. So. So that gives you a different sound. And when I think about modes, really all I think about is like different colors and moods that you can express by starting on a different note of a major scale, making that note your home base, and then um, just expressing that tonality. And that may sound weird to you, and it kind of is, and it really doesn't mean a whole lot until you get the sound of a particular mode in your head and you start using it. And um, I'm gonna show you one of the best ways that I like uh, to think about doing this. Um, let's say, you're playing just an over an A, a minor groove. And I'll loop this for you real quick. Now, you, when you do something like this, uh, you could play an A minor scale, just a regular A Aeolian. Or if you want a different mood or a different flavor, you could play an A Dorian scale, and that would sound a little bit different, something like this. And you may be thinking, well, I don't, I don't hear the difference. I don't know, <laughs> you know, what I'm supposed to be thinking about this, or how I'm supposed to be using this Dorian scale. And it all comes back to, like I had mentioned, with uh, the major scale and the major pentatonic scale, is thinking about what chords or chord progression you're playing over, and knowing enough about a little bit about music theory and knowing enough about it to where you can say, oh, okay, the Dorian scale would fit over this chord. So the basic option for you is a minor chord. If you have just a minor groove, static minor groove, like in this case, A minor, and we're gonna be in A minor for, the, or A Dorian for the, most of the things in this uh, little video here. But if you have that, you can express an A Dorian tonality over that if you want to. And I'm gonna show you one little quick scale shape. And um, the thing about learning modes is people end up learning uh, like a specific Dorian shape, like this. And that's way too much information that's too big and it's tough to do anything musical or meaning when you're just concentrating on learning that scale shape. Besides, like all those notes are just notes in a D, uh, sorry, a G major scale anyway, so. You can think about it as being G major, or you can think about it as a completely separate shape of being like an A Dorian mode. And I, I kind of do both, and it's a, a thing you're gonna have to decide on your own which way you wanna think about it. If you think about G major, it's a lot less work. But here is the shape that I want to teach to you just so you can start getting the sound of A Dorian in your head. And as we do this, um, I'm gonna go through a couple different chord progressions that fit an A Dorian, or being the key of A Dorian, and um, that's the best way to kind of expose yourself to what the Dorian scale sounds like. But here is the shape. It starts off just on this A note right here, and then you have five, seven, eight, with your first, third, and fourth fingers. Nothing different from a regular A minor scale right there so far, so. Okay. Now, if you force the notes to fit uh, in G major, the next string over will be one, two, and four, on the fifth, seventh, and ninth frets. Now a normal A minor scale would be this, just one, three, four, on five, seven, and eight, and then five, same thing on the next string over. But when you play a Dorian scale, your sixth note is raised one half step. So you have a natural or major sixth, and that's one of the notes that gives the Dorian kind of its um, characteristic sounds. So if you're playing over an A minor chord, and you have this, and you slide your pinky up just to the seventh, the lowered seventh, that's the next end of the scale, and that's the entire Dorian scale. I'm not gonna worry about this entire huge shape that we went over this one. All we're gonna do is worry about two strings, and then a slide to finish the scale off. And that's a lot easier to manage, and what you can do is put on, um, or get somebody to play an A minor for you. And just see how this sounds over this chord. And that is a lot easier to get your head around and start to improvise with 
than it is to tackle this whole skeleton. So you can do this anywhere where you see an A note on the fretboard. So if you see an A here, you can take this exact same shape, slide up, and then just experiment with it and see how it sounds. Try to memorize the sound particularly of that raised sixth because that's kind of what differentiates the Dorian scale from the regular uh, natural minor scale. So same exact thing here, same shape. So just getting familiar with that shape and getting the sound in your head and then starting to try and make melodies just by ear is kind of the step two for this. And uh, what I would do, and I have a jam track for you for this particular chord progression, and this will get us into talking about chord progressions that uh, fit over or go with the key of A Dorian, I'll get into this. But um, if you ever heard the song uh, Evil Ways, Gotta Change Your Evil Ways by Santana, you know that tune, uh, the chord progression is a G minor to a C7. So what I'm gonna do is just modulate this up to A minor, or a, starting on an A minor chord, just to keep us consistent with the key of A Dorian, and I'll show you. Um, first of all, I'll program it in and let, and let you hear what it sounds like to just mess around with the scale and make stuff up, and then I'll explain to you where this chord progression comes from. So it'll be an A minor to a D7. Okay, so let me progr program this in the loop real quick. Uh, let's see. Start on this A. And the cool thing about this is once you have that little scale shape in your uh, little bucket or arsenal of things to play over a groove like this, that's a Dorian progression, uh, you can mix in the minor pentatonic scale and it sounds really good and really appropriate, something like this. And so that is one way to use the Dorian scale. And I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna get into um, how you can tell if um, the Dorian scale can be used over certain progressions. Um, and let's go back to the key of G major here because that's kind of our parent key, or G major is kind of the, the first mode that we would think about as far as, you know, ironing, Dorian frigid, all that stuff. Um, but it doesn't really matter, again, unless you know what the sound sounds like and if you can use it. So if you have a G major scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp are the notes in that scale. The one chord and the four chord and the five chord all have major chords that go along with them. So in the key of G major, you have one for G major, uh, four for C major, and five would be a D major. Now, uh, the two, three, and six, or the second, third, and sixth notes have minor chords that go along with them. In G major, that would be A minor for two, B minor for three, and E minor for six. And what we do when we say we're playing in um, a Dorian is we're shifting the one or the home bass from a G up to an A minor. So the two becomes the one and that becomes your tonal center and everything else shifts too. So all of those chords that we mentioned you can use in Dorian progressions and you can use the, the Dorian scale with them as long as they fit over those chords you don't have to change anything which is really cool. So um, B minor would become the two instead of the three. C major would become the three instead of the four, and you can make chord progressions up like that, and uh, D major would become uh, the four instead of the five. And what happens when you have a chord progression like this, A minor. All you're basically doing is playing a two and a five out of the key of G major. And when you're thinking about it in a Dorian progression, when A minor is the tonal center, you're playing a one and a four. Is really cool. So if you know a little bit of theory, you can say, hey, uh, that's a, a an A minor and it's uh, in a C, D major, D7, and that fits in the key of A Dorian or G major. Thinking about A as the root instead of G. And when you do that, you can take any Dorian skill.
and it works like magic over it. So that's, um, if you're gonna do one thing, I would suggest just getting that one scale shape down, this little one. And then just jamming with it over this progression, A minor to D7, and just letting your ear guide you through the scale for what sounds really good. Another really good example of a Dorian progression is, uh, believe it or not, the song Horse With No Name. And this is a little bit of a weird one, but I wanted to go over this because I know most people out there are really familiar with it. So if you have an E minor, E minor chord to this chord right here, most people when they're teaching this song say that's a D uh, six nine over F sharp. It can function as an F minor chord too. F sharp minor chord. And going from an E, minor to an F sharp minor. Gives us basically um, in the key of D major, if you have a D major, A minor, F sharp minor, you can think about a D major scale, but the root note or the tonal center is on an E, so you're basically just going back and forth between an E minor and an F sharp minor. And then you can think about playing just a D major scale and emphasizing this E, or you can think about completely shifting your mind to like this uh, Dorian scale shape again. So starting on this E root note, so exact same shape. And just improvising with that over this chord progression, but seeing how the two and the three out of D major, which are E minor and F sharp minor, become kind of our main things we're working with, and E becomes, E minor becomes our tonal center, we'll really, um, is another example of uh, looking at chord progressions from uh, a modal standpoint instead of uh, just, you know, strictly major scale standpoint. So uh, let me get this in the looper. Let's see. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is take that exact same shape starting on any E root note and just experiment with how it sounds. Same thing up here on this octave. And just let your ear guide you and go through it that way. Um, that's a, another pretty simple example, but we changed keys there a little bit. Let's go back to the key of A minor real quick, and this is probably the best musical example I can think of for uh, messing with kind of an A Dorian sound. And the progression here is A minor, B minor, and then a C major, and then back to B minor, and then just loop that over and over again. And this is Moon Dance. Uh, in case you're wondering by Van Morrison, but the groove is So um, let's look at what what's happening with the chord progression like all of those chords are straight out of G major A minor would be the two B minor would be the three and C major seven or just C major would be the four But our root note or our tonal center is A minor so that tells me instead of being in G we're in a Dorian. So let me get this programmed in, and um, what you can do is take that exact same shape, the little seven note shape, experiment with it, and if you get lost, just think G major and play G major and let your ear guide you too. Okay, so A Dorian. Just think G major. And a couple things I did there. I threw in some sequencing uh, ideas like. I did, uh, just went to a straight A minor pentatonic a little bit. 
which is another great op option to kind of change things up. Um, what else did I do? Um, let's see. Um, I think that was it as far as um, this, but like another a really good example of this is Riders on the Storm. If you heard something like this, and put some delay on there, you get, get, get the full effect. That is straight up from. I think I'm playing it in a different key, but you get the idea. Uh, putting in some sequencing like there in thirds or in groups of three is another really good way to use the scale. So those are just some really basic ideas, and the fundamental thing here is just understanding that um, you're starting a G major scale from the second scale to green, that's your home base. And then you have to look at the chord progression that you're playing over and see, okay, do all of these chords fit over the chords that occur naturally in G major or A Dorian? And if they do, great. You can use one scale to cut to cover all those chords. If they don't, you're gonna have to adjust things as you want. But this is really a really cool option. Like when I play this, or the more I play with the scale, the less I like the natural minor scale. It sounds instead of so it's another option for you if you're just grooving over an A minor chord with your friends or just uh, at a jam sometime that has uh, maybe even like that that Santana song. And if you know just a little bit, just that one scale shape, that Dorian scale shape, you can throw it in with your uh, minor pentatonic to give it a little bit different flavor. So experiment with these things. Uh, if you didn't quite understand everything that was going on in this video, I would make a recommend just watching it again as far as the theory stuff. If you watch it multiple times, things will start clearing up more and more. See you next time. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what is your favorite mode to use when just vamping over a single chord. See you later.